Hey everybody, hope you're having a great day. Ryan Jackson here once again. Thanks for joining me on our 100 days of the 2026 code changes. We're about a quarter of the way through already. So, still talking about Article 230 services, Section 230.67, surge protection. The locations that require surge protection were increased. Uh, the same change was made in 215.18 for feeder circuits as well. I'm not going to cover the exact same change twice, but just know that 215.18 changed. In all honesty, and, and this will make sense momentarily, um, you're probably better suited to read 215.18 for feeders because usually, I shouldn't say usually, that rule pretty much always applies if you're in the occupancies mentioned in 215.18, whereas in Article 230, this rule, there's an exception that points you to 215.18. So make sure you're reading both rules, 230.67 and 215.18. But again, the same change was made, and they made a really nice clarification in the 2026 edition of 230.67's exception. So let's go ahead and jump in here. We got 230.67. 67A surge protection device. A surge protective device is required for services that supply dwelling units. Yep, been in the code for a while now. Number two, dormitories. It used to say dormitory units, and now it says dormitories, which I think is a good change. Uh, I think we talked about that. You know, my everything's kind of getting jumbled together in my brain, but I think we talked about the definition of dormitories and guest rooms and guest suites. Uh, if we didn't, Remember, we, we talk about dormitory units in previous versions of the code, and that was probably a term that we never should have even used because you don't have dormitory units, okay? You, you have a dormitory, right, which is like student housing or a military barracks. That's the dormitory. And then within those, you might have guest rooms or guest suites, but we don't really have dormitory units. That's not a thing anymore, right? So dwelling units, item one. Number two, dormitories. Number three, the guest rooms and guest suites of hotels, motels, and dormitories. So do we really need two and three? <laughs> and then number four, patient sleeping rooms of nursing homes and limited care facilities. And the new item five, the sleeping quarters of police, rescue, ranger, ambulance, or fire stations, and similar locations. Now, if that language sounds familiar to you, uh, it's because this came from section 210.12. 210.12 is the rules for AFCIs. And you might notice these locations here, uh, indicated in 230.67, all of these locations also require AFCI protection in 210.12. Why do we have surge protection requirements in the NEC? I mean, we understand why for you know emergency systems and hospitals and things like that, but why, why do you need them for a house? Why do you need them for dormitories? Well, the answer to that it's not to protect your TV in your refrigerator. It's to protect your life safety equipment that you have in your home, right? Your smoke alarms. Kind of, you know, I, I look, I don't care if a surge wipes out your TV. Sucks for you. I care if it wipes out your smoke alarms. I care if it wipes out all of the uh, AFCIs and GFCIs in your house, right? I care if it wipes out your home medical equipment, your CPAP machine. So we have more uh, life safety equipment in dwellings than we ever have before. And the same argument applies to dormitories, right? And certainly patient sleeping rooms. You're going to have home medical equipment there. You're going to have smoke alarms there. And then we added item five. Now, here's the thing. Item five is usually already covered by item three. Because remember, a dormitory, we, we usually think of a dormitory as the place where the college kids sleep, right? Well, a dormitory doesn't have to be where college kids sleep. A dormitory is defined in Article 100 as an area where you have uh, sleeping provisions for more than 16 people that are not related, and the individual rooms do not have permanent provisions for cooking, individual provisions for cooking, right? So if you have a fire station and it has more than 16 firefighters, it's already a dormitory and this rule already applied. But if you have a small fire station or a small police station where less than 16 people sleep, then it's not defined as a dormitory, and now item five would cover it. So not a huge expansion, but there you go. Now the surge protection device 
has to be part of or be adjacent to the service equipment. Right, we're in Article 230, right? I mean, Article 230 covers services. Article 230 starts at the service point, ends at the service disconnect. So <laughs> whether you like it or not, it's going to have to be part of or adjacent to the service equipment if it's found in Article 230. We can't write feeder rules in Article 230. The exception here was clarified, which I think was desperately needed. A surge protection device is not required at the service if the service supplies only feeder circuits and an SPD is provided at the load side of each of those feeder circuits. Okay, let's say that this is a house here, right? Single family dwelling. I've got my metering center, right? Newly defined term in Article 100. So I've got my meter center and I've got two service disconnects one goes to a panel upstairs, the other one goes to a panel downstairs, right? Pretty, pretty standard stuff. You'll recall in 215.18 that the feeders have to have surge protection device, right? So this feeder and that feeder have to have surge protection device at their load end, right? It has to be at the panels. Now, because you have surge protection for each of these, at their load end, you do not have to have it at the service. This is much better language than was found in the 2023. I still don't think the language is perfect. Maybe there's some room for improvement in the 2026, uh, but it's definitely more clear than the 2023 was. So there you go. Uh, again, not a huge expansion of where we need the surge protected protection devices but a very nice clarification on the exception the exception when you read it uh joy it was really hard to understand exactly what they were trying to do so there you go we covered 230.67 we're going to hit the very next section 230.68 in the next video new section on meter sockets i hope you'll join me then and i hope you'll be safe out there and i hope you have a great day you deserve it see you next time